All right, we're back with the dulls. This is, it's messing me up today because crude petroleum and petroleum gas has got me thinking, 57 billion, you know, you got me thinking that this is like Venezuela, but it can't be Venezuela because it was, we had Venezuela. Now, let me, let me look at this for a second because like, okay, it's an OPEC nation, which has you feeling like it's probably the Middle East. And then we see cocoa beans. And then we see coconuts, Brazil nuts, and cashews. <clears throat> 57 billion is pretty sizable. I feel like we've already had Saudi Arabia. I'm just trying to picture like a coconut growing in Saudi Arabia. And I don't know if I see it, but I feel like we've already had Saudi Arabia. But it, it, all signs are pointing to it. Wow, it's not Saudi Arabia. It's... Like, it's freaking me out. It's in South... No, it's in Africa. Really? Really? Um, $57 billion? I'm like, this is my... I literally, the stream started like 15 minutes ago. My brain is still in like building a tricycle for my kid mode right now. You got to give me a second. I'm picturing the world map. I'm sh sh Benedict Cumberbatch, sh sh Saudi, Arabia, Arabia, Arabian Peninsula, sh the Sea of Arabia, sh Sea, sh the Suez Canal. Sh um, this feels to me like it's the west coast of Africa, 4,000 kilometers, certainly not enough to get you across the Atlantic to South America. And it's, it's tropical, I mean, I want to say like it's South Africa because it's $57 billion. I feel like South Africa would probably have like a more diversified economy. It's not to say they don't export $60 billion. They may, they may not. But like I would expect it to not be like 90% petroleum products. I mean, they also have... De Antwoord albums and Neil Blomkamp films. Surely that would be at least like a little bit more. I, I don't really know what else to guess. At least we'll get like a vector here. That's worse. Almost. It is. No, it's worse. Literally. Um, <laughs> it's 4,000 kilometers. Zaza. I'm, this points to like. Listen, $60 billion is a lot of exports. That's like more than the Netherlands in, in tradal terms, in OEC terms. Could this be like Morocco? It's south of Morocco, southeast of Morocco. Lads, <laughs> it's, a, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it was an honor to uh, fight by your side. I'm so stumped. Slightly closer to Morocco than South Africa. I mean, I'm like, I, is it Congo? Is it Nigeria? Nigeria's probably got a lot of exports. Oh! <laughs> okay, we got there. 60 billion! Nigeria, good for you! I had no idea. I mean, I know it's like, uh, it's an economic powerhouse in Africa. 60 billion, though. That's, if you asked me, if you said like 15 billion higher or lower, I, don't, I might have said lower. That's my own ignorance. I'm not saying the data's wrong. So much petroleum. Why does that sound like a Jackbox, like AI-generated prompt? Don't even get me started on the Bill Gates and Socrates podcast. These guys know that's not Bill Gates and Socrates, right? They know it's one computer talking to itself. No disrespect, can you imagine how big of a loser you'd have to be to ever watch an AI-generated podcast between Bill Gates and Socrates?
It's because it's not Bill Gates and Socrates. It's a computer talking to itself, man. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm putting it in the simplest terms possible. All the comments are like, this sucks. And then the replies are like, it's going to get better. It doesn't matter how good it gets. I, I, like, I mean, I know that most people here know that, but like, no matter how good it gets, it's never going to be Socrates. Like, you got to do, like, I'm not saying AI has no purpose. I'm just saying that's the dumbest purpose of all time. It's like inventing like the internal combustion engine and being like, look, it can run a vacuum cleaner badly. And you're like, I don't want the fucking fumes in my house. I'll just put it in my car, put, strap some axles and some wheels on it. Let's go to town. It doesn't have to do everything. It doesn't have to power my damn dishwasher. Okay, we're going to start with Nigeria. Pretty, pretty good, Fokker. Give me um, the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's cooler. Give me Tunisia. That's warmer, but not as, not as warm as Nigeria. Makes sense, I guess, like climatologically, I would assume. Although I have to imagine Tunisia is pretty nice too. Um, let me, in that case, let me get a Senegal. Ooh, it's adjacent to the answer. I'm fucked. Um, it's, uh, it's Burkina Faso. Here we go. It's Mali. Mali's warmer, but not adjacent. It's probably Cote d'Ivoire. That's cooler. I'm going to say if I had to guess, it's probably Cameroon. Okay. Um, it's Liberia in all likelihood. That's warmer. It's, um... Equatorial Guinea? Yes. Yes, I did. That's what I fucking meant! <laughs> Guinea. Guinea's adjacent to the answer. Sierra Leone? Is it Equatorial Guinea? Guinea Bezo? Oh, okay, okay, thank God. Oh. Three weeks ago, I would not have gotten that. I would have had to ask chat. So we're getting there. Get, get here, we got you. Sir. I, 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 it's an evergreen uh, meme. Every time I see it, I laugh. Uh, Senegal, Guinea, Mali, Sierra Leone, Liberia, the Ivory Coast. Put your hands up, we got you surrounded. I'm Guinea Bissau, I'm Guinea Bissau. The Slovakia one got me really good. Yeah, I know, thank you. For once, I wasn't like completely off with many of my guesses. I mean, technically the Democratic Republic of Congo, I was really off, but that was before I guessed, um, that was before I knew what direction it was even in. World law. Mmm, this seems pretty easy, but I'm washed. Um, I feel like this is Northern Africa or like the Levant. Are you like Syria? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that time is the Mamluks in uh, Europa Universalis 4. Ah. All right, now to the movies. November 13th, 2009, I was in my final year of university, figuring out what the fuck I was going to do in like eight months. Um, let's see. $65 million opening from Sony Pictures. Is it possible that this is the opening for Avatar 1? No. Okay. Well, noted, noted. 
Let's get some tips from Sony. The genre is action, adventure, science fiction. The actor is John Cusack. This is 2012. I know, it's weird. It came out in 2009. We were warned. Okay, say what you will about 2012. It's not a good movie. Also, I've only seen it on TV, so I don't remember much. But I do seem to remember that um, a lady's husband gets, like, ground up in, uh, like, an automatic door or something like that. He gets turned into, like, ground beef, basically. And then, like, ten minutes later, she falls in love with John Cusack, which is crazy. Like, an adult made this movie. Anyway... Um, 100% that is what happened. <laughs> you would do the same? Well, I guess I've never been under that kind of duress before. Never had to knock on wood. Just imagining that while a dude gets ground up in the human hamburger. But I know someone who has, and I'm sure it isn't good. If they say, wonder if I never... Anyway, um... That being said, the teaser for 2012 went hard as hell. You knew it was going to suck ass because it was Roland Emmerich. But you, the teaser where it starts with like the Buddhist monk in the tower like ringing the bell. And you're like, whoa, what's this guy doing? This movie looks boring as hell. And then like the huge tidal wave comes up to like the 300 meter tall tower and knocks it over. You're like, oh, man. Anyway. But the... You had to have a little bit of media literacy. You're like, good teaser, do not pay $15 to go see the movie. Okay, a Disney movie in 2009. It's an animation family drama fantasy. Let me get a tagline on this. I'm not great with the voice actors and actresses sometimes. Seasons Greetings. This is the new Grinch. The Grinch. The Grinch. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I, I know it's not the 2003 Grinch with Jim Carrey, but they came out with like another Grinch. Seasons Greetings. Starring Jim Carrey. I'm stunlocked. I have to come back. Lionsgate. Second week. First week was probably limited release. Starring Gabare Sidibe. If you see me with a chickadee, no diggity, it'll be diggity, 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 giggity, giggity, giggity. This is Precious. Based on the novel Push by Sapphire. Holy crap, Lois. How do you not know that? You don't know, you don't know Gabare Sidibe? This was a huge movie. Like, there was, everyone was talking about Precious, man. I don't even remember it. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was like nominated for best, uh, best Oscar, man. Maybe you had to be like 23 when it came out or something. But if you were like 11, you probably never saw it. People are like, oh, it made $8 million. No, bitch, it made $47 million, which is amazing because the lead actress was Gabourey Sidibe. Who? She's fucking precious. That's the only thing nobody knew who she was before they came out with the movie. That's a huge gross for a, a movie that has a cast that is not that noteworthy. I've never seen it, though, or read the novel Push by Sapphire. Overture Films. This could be like a scary movie. This could be a, uh, it's a little late for Halloween. Genre? Oh, a war comedy. From Overture Films. <laughs> so I want to say it's like Meet the Spartans, but it's too late. George Clooney War Comedy, The Men Who Stare at Goats. You got it right there, okay? I've never seen it. I don't know how that exists in my brain, but... I think that I, that, that's like locked into my brain. Because I remember at Christmas, must have been 2009, my grandpa was like, oh, I watched that Men Who Stare at Goats movie. And I was like, oh, okay. That's, I, I don't know why that's stuck in my head, but it's in there. Um, and then 67 million in his third weekend from Sony, starring Michael Jackson. That's This Is It. Again, I, was, I had a good brain at this point in my life. I was there. This was a big movie. 
or it was big-ish. How much did it make? 72 million? Not to be confused with this is the end, which is kind of a war comedy, if you will. Jim Carrey seasons greetings. How the Grinch, the, the Grinch, how the Grinch stole Christmas. Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. Grinch. There's no way it's the Grinch. Grinch is the cat in the hat. I'm sorry. Seasons greetings. Actor two, Gary Oldman. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm probably missing something obvious. I don't know this. I'm, oh, it's a Christmas carol. <laughs> I know it. Yeah, I know it. Fair enough. No, oh, what's he doing? I'm, we're lucky we got 55% on that. What's he doing on the cover? He's going like, ah. What's the Twitch emote that looks like that? There's a, there's a global emote where the guy looks like this. No, no, not just the one with the tongues. Yeah, that's it right there. Uh, wait, wait, what is this? Broke back. Don't see that one too much. I have no idea why it's called broke back, but this is from a different era of the internet, maybe. Okay, 55th percentile. I'll take that. That was a good one. I mean, we, we easily could have gotten a Christmas carol, but it happens from time to time. Cine to Nerdle. I see Ice Cube, Compton, Death Row. How is this not straight out of Compton? Try to sound like America's most. You can yell all day, but you don't come close. I mean, that's Death Row Records, man. Maybe, maybe Ice Cube's not involved in Death Row, now that I think about it. Okay, now let me... Let, Soldier, Anthony Mackie. Falcon, Anthony Mackie. Wallace, Stop Motion. Curse of the Were Rabbit. Anthony Mackie, Soldier Falcon. <laughs> Wait, rap artist Mile. Curse, because they swear in Eight Mile. Death Row. The Green Mile. Healing Powers, Death Row. The Green Mile. Okay. Ah, this is like Captain America, the Winter Soldier. This is the Green Mile. This is straight out of Compton. This is Wallace and Gromit, the Curse of the Were Rabbit. I think that rap artists, Mile and... Anthony Mackie, maybe, just makes 8 Mile. I'm crazy. That's too easy. I also thought that it could be like Anthony Mackie. Oh, he's already falconed up right here. I'm tired, boss. Gets me every time. Good run. Oh, thank you. Reversal. Shutter Island. Gangs of New York. Movies with Leonardo DiCaprio. Maybe not. Meet the Parents. Movies where they meet the parents. Martin Scorsese films. Hugo. A Bronx Tale. Movies that take place in New York, Brooklyn, Made in Manhattan, A Bronx Tale, and Gangs of New York. Joker, Hugo, movies named after one person, Joker, Hugo, Selena, nope. The Deer Hunter, movies with John Voight, Anaconda, 
and others. Shutter Island. Who's in that fucker? Meet the parents. Meet the parents. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Also in Joker. Also in Joker, I believe. You'll find he's in that. Not in Anaconda. Hear me out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So there's our, our connector. Hustlers, Selena, Ladybird. I'm washed. Movies with animals in the title. Ladybird, Deer Hunter, Anaconda. Movies about movies featuring Jennifer Lopez. Am I fucking crazy? Selena is Jennifer Lopez. Selena. She's also in Made in Manhattan. She's also in fucking Anaconda. What the? She she's in Hustlers. Guys, I'm fucking confused. <laughs> Maybe this is our connector. Hustlers, Made in Manhattan, Anaconda. Holy cow, Selena. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Silence, Hugo, Gangs of New York. Maybe these are the Scorsese films or films with Leonardo DiCaprio, Scorsese films. Lady Bird, movies with Shargi Ronan. <laughs> Sorry. Suarezo. Movies, critically acclaimed movies I've not seen. Robert De Niro films, Jennifer Lopez films. Martin Scorsese was involved in some way. Movies that take place in New York. Robert De Niro. Schwarzy Ronin. Sergia. Sergia. New York. Okay, we got there. Oh, Green is always the connector. Whoa, I didn't know that. That's, that's incredible intel. I already forgot. Sarja. Shorsha, Sersha, 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 okay, Sersha, Sersha, I wonder if I've ever seen a movie that she's ever been in, like, by all accounts, all of them are good, I don't know, has she ever been, like, in the X-Men? Sersha, Sersha. She played Rogue in the new X-Men? She's above it? Oh, she's one of those actresses. She's like, she's not like Florence Pugh. Oh, I don't just do A24 stuff. I'm also in Black Widow. Okay, Rollerball, great movie. Chris Klein, Rebecca Romaine, Hold the Stamos, LL Cool J, Deepest Bluest, My Hat is Like a Shark's Fin, and Highlander 2, The Quickening, another great movie. You got Christopher Lambert in that, and of course, Sean Connery. Sean Connery is probably going to be your connection there. Am I crazy to think, one second here, there's, there's a connection, there's a connection here. It's like Rebecca Romaine, Hold the Stamos, to X-Men, to... Somehow we can get to like Indiana Jones or League of Extraordinary Gentlemen or Finding Forrester. What the hell else was Sean Connery in in my lifespan? Highlander 1. I can't even, Christopher Lambert, he's just like, I know him from Highlander and then also um, Bad video game movie. You know what? It's probably easier for us to just reverse this one and see if maybe there's an actor in Highlander 2 that I'm not familiar with. Oh, I forgot Virginia Madsen. Okay, hang on. There's, this is opening up a lot of doors to us. Rusty Schwimmer, huh? Okay. John C. McGinley can get you to office space. Michael Ironside can get you to Starship Troopers, which gets you to like Denise. Wait, hang on. Michael Ironside, Starship Troopers, Denise Richards, The World Is Not Enough, and then the old ass dude who played Q, Desmond Llewellyn, uh, Dr. No, no, okay, Goldfinger, Goldfinger 1964, Sean Connery, 
the Highland, sorry, not the Highlander to the quickening. I went backwards. I went there and back again, a hobbit's tale. <clears throat> How the hell? I was trying to... I, right around here, which is step two, I, I forgot that I was trying to get to Sean Connery. Or so, I forgot that I was trying to get to, like, um, Denise... Wait, no, I don't even know where I was going on. I was just being straight up with you. I don't know where the fuck I was going. You're right. It took me four steps to connect the movie to itself. As I'm going to pay the Giamatti tax as a result of my idiocy. I'm going to go Virginia Madsen to Sideways. I'm going to take you to Paul Giamatti. This is us playing the, paying the Giamatti tax. Um, now, Chris Klein, he's in Election. Great movie. Matthew Broderick, Reese Witherspoon. Directed by Alexander Payne, who, strangely enough, wait a minute, was married to fucking Virginia Madsen, right? Where, where, who, who, Paul Giamatti's in Sideways, also directed by Alexander Payne. Now, LL Cool J, Deep Blue Sea, you got Samuel L. Jackson involved there. I'm thinking. Who's the, was Jesse Plemons in Jungle Cruise? He was in Jungle Cruise, dude! I was like, because my nieces watched this on uh, Disney Plus when they were here once. And I was like, there's an actor in this movie who's too fucking good to be here. And then I was like, it's Jesse Plemons. Okay, anyway. Sorry, I got, I got lost in the sauce a little bit. I'm thinking, okay? Come on, somebody I've heard of. Somebody I've heard of. Motherfucker. Stephen Dunleavy. Okay, it's actually what's crazy about it is how easy it is. You're going to go Emily Blunt who's in A Quiet Place Part 2, which also does have, um, well, hang on here, hang on. I, I know where we must go. Jimon, wait, no, we can't get out of the, give me a second here. I was going to go John Krasinski. We're going John Krasinski. Where am I trying to go again? I'm trying to get the Rebecca Romaine Stavos, man. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. We're going, okay, John Krasinski, Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch, um, Infinity War, Samuel L. Jackson, Deep Blue Sea, LL Cool J, Rollerball. Easy. Okay, let's look at the shortest distance. Rollerball, LL Cool J, Any Given Sunday, John C. McGinley, Highlander 2. Well, in some ways, that's better than 11, I suppose. But you got there. But did you pass Paul Giamatti along the way? I don't know. I don't think so. Guess the game. I know this. I don't, I, I don't know that I, I don't know it, but I know that I know this. I'm skipping number one. Metacritic score of 91. This looks so freaking familiar to me. I'm skipping. It's Guitar Hero 2. It's Guitar Hero, it's Guitar Hero 2. It's Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock. It's Guitar Hero 1, Hold the Legends. We'll take that. You know you can purchase it from the following retailers. I didn't play much Guitar Hero 1. I, I, I played 2, 3, Rock Band, Rock Band 1 through 4, Rock Band Beatles. I mean 2... Guy who has only played from Guitar Hero 2 onwards, they really hit their stride in Guitar Hero 2. Game Dull. Game Dull Classic. Um, this is the cover. I think this is the damn Sims, man.
The Sims. The Sims 3. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, did you see? there was a tweet that, that got the rare good tweet that the For You page surfaced. I guess there's a, a, a not safe for work mod for The Sims 4. And what this is the context you need to understand this tweet. And the tweet was just, uh, the, the text said, um, my roommate in The Sims got a promotion. And when she came home, my dude just started eating her ass. And then it was just a naked lady like with her legs spread. And the dude was eating her ass from the back in The Sims. And then the replies were like, oh my God, I love the Wicked Whims mod. Check this out. And it was just like two Sims fucking. And then the one Sim like pulls out his you know what and then ejaculates all over her back. I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? What are people doing in The Sims these days? And then the, the other replies were like, oh my God, when I was a kid, The Sims let you woohoo, but they were always underneath a blanket. And I'm like, you're dumb. <laughs> Your ass is stupid. <laughs> Can't just buy that shit at Best Buy. Are you crazy? Anyway. Oh. Gangdel artwork. This looks like a um This looks like a Final Fantasy. This looks like Final Fantasy 15. I used to have an ass like that. <laughs> Sorry. Is this Groot? Is this Dante's Inferno? What is, is this Gears of War? That looks like a guy from Gears of War. This is Gears of War Judgment. This is Gears of War. This is Gears of War. This is Gears 5. This is Gears 4. Okay, we got there. Never really played him. Here we go. This is the halfway point of the dulls and also where dreams come to die. Dark Souls 2. 2014. Wow, one green is a great start. And then it's a role-playing game that may also have some other elements. How about Dragon Age Inquisition? That doesn't help us too much, unfortunately. It's third person, first person, multi-platform. Role-playing game that's not in this saga. That's tough. Is it Guild Wars 2? You idiot, that's from 2012. And it's multi-platform. It's not even first person, third person. It's like first person, third person, and isometric. Or first person, third person, and also side scrolling. It's Divinity Original Sin 1. You sack of shit. There is a single player campaign. Um. It's from Obsidian Entertainment, in my opinion. It's the game that I always forget. It's not Pentiment. It's the one that they made before Pentiment. Pillars of Eternity 1. Okay, well, we got another green. We take those. Paradox or Obsidian were involved. And it's single player only. <laughs> it's Rune Master. Single player, first first person, third person. It's not paradox, man. That would live in my brain, I think. Let me get the clue. It's a role-playing strategy adventure game. 
feel like this is fucked up because like I'm, you know what the what, what we should have done is just type like Fallout Four or maybe Fall and it's not gonna be Fallout uh, New Vegas because that's like 2010, but it'll at least tell us if we're on the right foot if it's Obsidian. No, it won't because there's other companies involved in its production. Wait, but Obsidian is the only one that rolls that that overlaps. Okay, Obsidian. And it's not Pillars of Eternity 1. Their, their asses were busy, man. They came out with a game in 2015 and 2014. Wait, Obsidian... <laughs> I was just going to say they made a game with Paradox. Yeah, it's Pillars of Eternity. Obsidian... I don't fucking remember. It's Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Arm. It's fucking... I don't know. I don't know. It's You know what? It's, it's Stuntman on the PlayStation 2. It's top gear it's um um it's a uh, cruising usa it's okay fine you got me it's fucking stronghold crusader you got me it's um battle block theater you got me it's um mommy's revenge it's among us stop by the stick of truth okay yeah 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 i remember that it's a long time ago, but I remember that. Obsidian made that? Well, can't you tell because the writing is so good? Please do not play it. I'll do you one better. I'm pretty sure I played through and beat South Park The Stick of Truth when I had more free time. It was a different era. I don't really think that I enjoyed it all. I think that I, I went through the motions and was like, it's okay. I did not play the fractured butthole, though. That's, that is the same year I played through Dragon Age, uh, the whole the Dragon Age Inquisition. Still waiting to see what's going on with Solus. What's up with that guy? Is he our friend? Is he our enemy? Is he a dragon? Who knows? Okay, two words. It's an R-rated drama from 1984 that's well-liked, well-loved. I say it's Sophie's Choice. A deeply affecting film about family separation, loss, and a man's last act of repentance. City Slickers. The movie belongs to Stanton, of course, and it's hard to think from any other, any other actor who can go from Chaplin-like outcast to tragic hero in the space of a feature film. Harry Dean Stanton. What do I know that Harry Dean Stanton was in? Alien. <laughs> it's probably got a 94, 93, but it's not from 1984, and it's not a drama. Uh, I don't know. Alien. Alien Resurrection. It's a striking, gripping film for most of its length, with Wenders and cinematographer Robbie Mueller showing a great love and fascination for the land, almost as if their European upbringings had made them slightly envious of the wide-open spaces. It's Lorenzo's Oil. A deeply moving yet kind Western, Blank captures a place and people like never before or after. So we were on the right track with City Slickers then. True Grit. Paris, Texas. This one's freaking me out. Because there's another... For, I've, I've heard that Paris, Texas is really good. But there's another movie called Paris, Texas from like 2001 starring Steve Zahn. That is the only Paris, Texas that I've ever seen. So every time I see people online talking about Paris, Texas and they're like, oh, it's one of my favorite movies. I'm like, really? The Steve Zahn movie? I do love Steve Zahn. That's Happy Texas. You're so right. I've been, I've been laboring under that assumption for 15 years. Okay, it's good to know. Hap, that's Happy Texas. Not Paris, Texas. Okay, hang on. Happy Texas. Let me, let me just... It's a 1999 film starring Steve Zahn and William H. Macy. Three prisoners escape from a chain gang, and two of them, Wayne and Harry, steal an RV. They dis discover the RV actually belongs to two gay men who travel around Texas as consultants for beauty pageants. 
They are apprehended by Chappie Dent, the sheriff of Happy, Texas, who mistakes the escapees for the pageant organizers. Posing as the organizers, Wayne and Harry proceed to help out with the pageant while hiding from the law and waiting for an opportunity to rob the local bank. You could see why I was confused that this was like a movie that people were talking about online as if it's one of the best movies ever made. The duo's scheme is complicated by the fact that Chappie himself is gay and is attracted to the prisoner Harry. Straight Harry, on the other hand, becomes attracted to Josephine, the president of the bank! Meanwhile, gay David, who's also straight, gets involved with the local pageant coordinator, Doreen. By the day of the big pageant, the third escaped convict has surfaced, leading Wayne and Harry to organize a break-in during the show. Harry calls in more police, and in the process, all three are apprehended. In the last scene, the pageant group that Wayne helped train come to the prison to show them the closing number in the costumes he made. What a great movie. Budget, 1.75 mil. Box office, 1.9 mil. Critical reception. Oh, certified 81% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. I, I liked it a lot when I was 12 years old, and now I'm vindicated. Okay, we're on Chrono Photo. Another underrated movie in a similar vein, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Don't hear people talking about that movie too much these days. <sighs> Directly pre-World War I, 1912... America. 1900 even. <laughs> Fiji water. Some kind of parade. Bro, that's Steve Nash. This is like... I don't know. It, <laughs> is this Mardi Gras? <laughs> Someone's walking around with a damn tuba. It's got to be Mardi Gras, right? This... I'm looking at the phones. I'm looking at the phones. Everybody got the damn phones. I'm looking at the stroller. Is that an Uppa Baby Vista? I got to say this is like 2016. 2022. Holy cow, it was last year. This is uh, Lance Armstrong at the first Tour de France. And to say this is like um, Belgium 1914. I'm crazy. This is, uh, I know we've talked about this before, and this is basically something I just stole from Twitter. How crazy is it that like Jason Alexander in Seinfeld was like, they, they poke fun at him for being overweight in like every episode. And in 2023, he literally just looks like a guy. Like, there's some scenes where you look at George, and as I'm like, dude, as a kid, I was like, this guy's like an oaf. As an adult, I'm like, he's got some, he's got some fit, man. He's got some drip. He's just a normal guy. Like, there's, not, there's nothing unusual about it at all. Jerry is, like, he's skinny, by, even by normal man standards. Like, I, I, Jerry's got to be, like, 6'1", 165 or something like that. Like, he's, he's a pool noodle. George, I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to body shame him. He's probably, you know, maybe he's, like, 5'6", like, 185, something like that. But still, that's just, like, a normal guy in the modern era. Yeah, people would be posting, these days, they would be posting images of Jason Alexander on Twitter, and they, the, the caption would just say, hear me out. He does have the Kavorka. Not with that hair? No, but with, like, the, the bicycle hats on, man? For sure. For sure. You see the picture of John Goodman from the Flintstones that just says, hear me out? John Goodman looks like, it, young John Goodman, like 30s, 40s John Goodman, looks like the kind of guy who could crush a man's skull in his hand. 
He looks like a professional arm wrestler who's never stepped foot in a gym, which is scary as hell. Like, that's just like, that strength came from God. That didn't come from work. It just came, like, he was just born fucking strong, dude. That's crazy. Anyway, this is not 1960. This has got to be like 1992. 1989, I'll take that. Vote equals power. This is... Is this not Taiwan? Vote? It's, this is weird. Because, like, are they really... To me, this looks like they're talking about the U.S. federal election. Maybe this is where, like, expats can vote. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But if that's the case, this doesn't look like a photo from 2016 or 2020. It looks like a photo from 2012 or 2008. But I'm going to say it's 2012. It's 2004! Holy cow! <laughs> and it's literally just New York. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. That makes more sense, now that I think about it. Look at the cars. You see cars like that now and then still. I don't know what it would be in 2012. I'll tell you, if it was 2020, you'd be seeing a lot of white Tesla Model 3s. 2004, I mean, this, is, this just looks like you can see any, see any of these on the road. When I think of 2004, the car I think about is like a purple uh, Plymouth Voyager slash Dodge Caravan, though. I feel like everybody was driving a, a Plymouth Voyager back in the day. I don't know why it was purple. I wasn't buying cars back then. Presented by Dougal Murray. Okay, it's a nice looking house. pretty great don't get me wrong uh i mean this start me at two start me at three and a half million we just don't know where it is <laughs> holy fuck i'm crazy <laughs> you're 0.00 percent from the average price i don't even know i still don't know anything about it i don't know where it is i don't well, i don't need to see any more of that house i think i got it already figured out take me back to time guesser okay that's an easy one okay Dude, dude, we're cruising now. Place myself down here. This is um, Mads Mickelson and Ava Green and Daniel Craig. This is the press tour for Casino Royale circa 2006. Now, what I was going to say is everybody gets mad at me because I disrespect the Netherlands. Every, anytime I see a canal, I'm like, oh, it's Venice. So I'm like, uh, Amsterdam. But then I'm like, I see the Dutch, or the, sorry, the Danish flags. And I'm like, this is definitely Copenhagen. And I know Mads Mikkelsen is Danish, too. Also, this is like straight up. This is 2006 drip, man. This is so good. The black jeans and the, the leather jacket with the racing stripes. That's 2006, baby. I know some people are like, it never left. Mm, some people never left. But I would say that this being the eminent style of menswear has definitely left. And that's okay. Mads Mikkelsen, Eva Green, and Daniel Craig at a press event for Casino Royale in Copenhagen. Okay, 9987. We definitely take those. <sighs> Jeez, it's Albert Einstein. I was like, <laughs> first I was looking, I was like, who is this guy? Who's this motherfucker right here? This is Albert Einstein receiving an honorary degree in the place in America where every school is. So roughly here to here. Let's call this um, Princeton. I feel like Albert Einstein is associated with Princeton, which is in New Jersey somewhere. Probably Princeton, New Jersey. I'll just level with you. I don't know where that is. Um... Right there. There it is. 
Maybe he's not, maybe this isn't Princeton, but I'm going to assume it's Princeton. You're at Princeton University circa 1950. That's Oxford, and it's 1931. <laughs> well, that makes up for the last score. Okay. This is, um, there's a lot of clues here. Waitress, the movie came out in like 2007, converted to a Broadway musical. We're talking early 2010s. This dude is like, come on, man, really? You must be born again, John 3, 1, 21. Everyone's just laughing at this guy. Oh, man, I like, they're just laughing at him. Which is like, I get it, but th this picture is giving me anxiety, man. Like, every face is like, she's like, oh, honey. This guy's like, I got to see this. This guy, he's cutting up. And his girlfriend's like, don't do that. And then this guy's just like, he's got some sympathy. He's been there before. She, she's not really that concerned about this. She's just taking in the sights. This guy, you know, again, he's just kind of like, I got to see what's happening here. Um, well, this is Times Square. Winner Tony Award Best Musical Revival. An American Eagle was still popping off. I got to assume this is early 2010s. This men's fashion. I feel like this is 2012 era men's fashion. So I'm going 2012 Times Square, New York. Everybody's rocking a button up with khaki shorts. Times Square. Boop. 1962. It was 2018. Holy cow. This is 2018. <laughs> I was going to say, where are they now? But now I'm like, they're, they're here, man. They're here. This is like... Paris... Fucking at some point. It's Paris, 1908. Can I tell you, I know I'm, I'm going to seem like a... It's 1923, okay. I'm going to... I'm, I'm genuinely not that anti-AI, okay? I'm, I'm pro-AI for automating tasks that human beings find tedious to do. I'm anti-AI because like 99.9% .9 of the AI stuff that I see on Twitter is always like, look at how we can use it to replace like real art with a facsimile that's fucking soulless, okay? People will, on Twitter now, people will post like a historical photo that's in black and white. They'll be like, check it out. This is the world's fir first photograph ever taken. This is the Archboop, Arch, <laughs> Archduke fucking, who gives a shit, Theodosius from... 1863 posing in front of what like the diocese of who cares right and it's incredible this is like a for the first time in human history man built a machine that could capture a moment in time but it's not in color you can still see what it is but it's it's not in color people will reply hey colorized bot can you hook us up here? And then a fucking robot goes in and goes beep, 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 and puts like a fucking fresco filter on it and like removes some of the noise and stuff like that. And it's like, here you go. I hear the filters that I use to colorize this historical photo and make it look like complete ass. If you like this and you uh, want to see more of it, consider buying me a cup of coffee. I'm like, you're a robot, buddy. I'm not going to buy you a piece of coffee for stripping all the context out of like an incredible historical artifact. Makes me sick, man. This is Portland during the crazy um, wildfires that were there in like 2020. Nope, that's Australia. <laughs> you 
yo, dude, it's so fucking freaky. It, it's like, looks like the apocalypse and our score was 2012. What? Why are you acting like the robot destroyed the photo? The robot, I mean, it didn't destroy the original, but like it desecrated the photo. How small does your brain have to be to be like, wow, great picture, shame, there's no colors in it. Let's just insert some colors where there weren't any before. It's like you got a black and white photo and then you're just like, mm, mm, I understand the historical importance of this. Like, and I can appreciate that on like an intellectual level, but my brain would just like it more if I just, and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you brown hair and then I'm really going to make this part in the background pop. It doesn't make it better. It's like your ass is like, thank God they remade Ben-Hur. Ooh, Ben-Hur, but shot on an IMAX camera. Ooh. It would just be interesting to see. Well, you, there's about a million bots on Twitter. You know, it's just one man's opinion. I'd be happy to recommend some to you. Literally make one tweet about AI, close the tab, reopen the tab, and then click on anything that gets shown in your For You page. That's the recipe for seeing nothing but colorized photos for the rest of your life. Listed. This is a strange looking house. Not a, not anti this house. It's just a strange looking house. I guarantee there's light bulbs up here that are never getting changed. And that's like it is what it is. But like there there's no way like this this is a bungalow. The roof slants up. There's got to be like a 25 foot high ceiling right there that has a light bulb that can't be changed. And that's, again, it's A-OK. -okay. I'm going to say this is a $1 million house even. It's in Bella Fersh, South Dakota. I'm going to say this is a $415,000 house. I'm actually fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm insane. He knows houses. Remember that next time you say, I'm out of touch. I'm objectively fucking in touch, okay? Traveler, today I'd like to go from Chad to Uganda. This is not my area of expertise. This is like, <laughs> so this is like the middle of Africa, which is the part of Africa I don't know very well. I don't know much of it really well, but like North Africa, I could do like a ring, you know, you go like Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, like you got to go a little further, we go to Kenya, go for you, get to South Africa, go around the horn, but the middle of it, I'm totally screwed on. So I'm going to guess countries that I don't normally guess for like the rim of Africa. This is like Djibouti. It's good to get like a framework for where we stand. Um, how about the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which might be like here? Oh, okay, okay. The Central African Republic. My God, the pure luck, pure luck. I guess when I'm in Central Africa, I should probably default to the Central African Republic. It does kind of look like a puppet with like a, his winky is a key. You know what I mean? Doesn't it look like a like a Jeff Dunham puppet that's like, uh, where's my car keys? And then he's like, right here.
You know what I'm saying? Kind of. I'm mad that I can see it. Oh, man. All right, slash Marvel.